You once said that when you are working on your books and scripts, you visualise the successful outcome. Could you talk about it? What are your thoughts about attaining the desired outcome? Yes, so I am a big fan of Law of Attraction. Uh, if you've never heard of Law of Attraction, the, the speaker that I really resonate with and like and I think is very sweet is a lady called um, Esther Hicks. And she, um, a being from the future speaks from her through her called Abraham Hicks. Um, <laughs> just cuckoo in itself, but you know, like a, ah, so what, we're already into there is no self, so. <laughs> alien speaking through, future alien speaking through us, so what, it's nothing. Um, so, and, um, and the reason that I like her is that I just feel a very beautiful vibration when she's speaking about it. I think the law of attraction is like really popularized now and a lot of people use it in coaching and um, selling a lot of products now. Um, Esther Hicks, some have said that she's one of the first pioneer teachers that sort of brought it into European and American consciousness. Um, or Western consciousness, whatever you call us. And um, yeah, I really like her energy when she speaks about it. It feels really pure. Um, it sounds like it's got loads of doership in it, but it but it only sounds like that when you don't understand doership, when you don't understand that we are like robots. So everybody, or most people in society believe that I get the hand, I pick up my drink, I take a drink. And they believe in that action that there is a separate entity doing that. Whereas actually, it's, it's like a robotic response. It's the way this body's conditioned. So scientists say that we make a choice to take a drink six seconds, up to six seconds prior to the conscious recognition that it's happening. And then when we consciously recognize, so, so, so six seconds, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to take a drink. I mean, that is amazing. Six seconds is a really long time. So our body has decided what it's going to do six seconds prior to telling us the story, I'm going to take a drink. But in that telling the story, we believe that we are somebody with free will and choice and that we decided to take the drink. Um, and they say, scientists, and from my observation of it, is the reason that we, um, we have these um, uh, we have the appearance of choice making is because it updates the machine. So by me contemplating if I'm going to pick a coffee or a tea, um, or a baguette, I'm updating the machine in how many calories, say, the baguette has in the health benefits of that. So I'm putting in information through the activity of apparently choosing. So it's actually a way this machine is gathering information. So it's actually really impersonal. And it's the way in which we learn like a, through apparently choosing. Not all the time, we also learn through other methods, but it's one way in which we learn. Um, and so in law of attraction, to me, I see it as an update of these machines. So in learning what the law of attraction is, it's like these machines are becoming updated. It's not a person that's desiring um, things for the future. It's this machine learning the functioning of this life. So to me, I believe in the best language that can be put, so it's not truth, because there can be no truth, but in the best language that I've found so far is that life works through this process of like attracts like. Which is really beautiful. It just gives me like, um, like love bubbles, just speaking about it, so like attracts like. So if you are fearing something, then that is what you attract to you. And if you are 
of this open, loving feel, feeling towards something, that is what you'll attract towards you. So say if um, I was writing my book and the whole time I doubted that I could do it and thought it wouldn't be successful, that I suspect is what the outcome will be. If the whole time when I'm writing my book, I have this beautiful, lovely feeling that it's going to touch lots of people and will thrive and do really well and is really beautiful, then from my experience, that is what will come about. It's, to me, I feel like it's the law of magic. It's this magical thing that cannot be explained, that we are creating our realities, but there is no I that's creating it. So these bodies are creating their realities and it doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense because it seems like there's all these different people that are interacting and it seems like chance. Like how, how can I be creating my reality and all the other people creating their reality? But it is magical. I mean, if you look at quantum physics, it even begins to suggest this. I can't really explain to you quantum physics because it's um, really complex and I haven't studied that much, but from some limited understanding, is that um, it looks like the particles um, uh, behave in different... The, the observation of particles affects them, which is really, really stunning. So the observation of particle affects the appearance of those particles and what they do. That's really like um, magical. There's also another thing which I, I, I came to know recently in science where it's like when two atoms interact, this is really, really bonkers. When two atoms interact, or particles, I don't even know what it is. I can't even remember the name of the theory, but when they interact, they... Um, no matter how far away you take these two particles, they always move according to the other one. So if one moves this way, depending on the law of the movements, then the other moves this way, which is really bonkers. That really um, undoes what we believe reality to be, whereas we believe reality to kind of be this evolution process where everyone's kind of in this world together and it's kind of like, it's just the way it is if you get run over by a car or if you get burglarized. Whereas science is beginning to question that, that that's not the way which reality is working. So let me give you an example on mass media platforms. So if I believe, if everybody in this world, so if something comes into fashion, say a yellow handbag, like, and like a million people start thinking about wanting a yellow handbag, I feel like this affects other people around and then that will then, like two million, three million, four pe million people will begin to want the yellow handbag. And I think this happens um, in lots of different ways. Like I've, I don't really engage that much with the media, but sometimes I find that I'm wanting something and then when I look into media or look on the media, I notice it's being advertised everywhere. Um, there's also a theory um, by an English scientist, I forget their names now, called memes, where they believe that um, ideas are like genes, they evolve. Um, and they, um, like they, they evolve, um, Um, by themselves. Oh, it's not. Oh, sorry, and they're and it's and, and they're always trying to evolve. So if if I come up with the idea, say of God, say nobody had ever heard of God, this idea in itself wants to evolve. So it's like a gene. So therefore, it wants other people to let me um, see what I can do. says excellent connection oh good um and 
So I do believe that life happens in that way. That if you have a... Um, and these are so deep sometimes because often you don't know what you're calling into yourself. But say if you have uh, this feeling of like people abuse you, like, but this is really deep, so you begin to realise that you have this feeling that people abuse you or society abuses you. I feel like that's what you're going to attract. But that's what you're going to see everywhere is abuse and what you're going to attract to yourself. It's only when you begin to see that people aren't, or not all people are abusive. So when you have this, um, this feeling and this idea that um, people are kind and expansive, that that's what you'll begin to see and attract. Um, and this isn't meaning to hurt anyone. I know these ideas can really hurt people, especially if you've had a difficult life. Um, but it can also be really liberating. It's like really taking responsibility for this life. But also some people have the psychology where they beat themselves up a lot and so therefore they hear these ideas and then they just use it as another weapon to beat them up and say, yeah, I fucked up. I even like now I'm calling in all this abuse, all this negativity to me. And and that's the wrong attitude. This is, it's it's like totally impersonal that this is happening but it's um the way it happens if you think about a story so you've got this cat or not cat you've got an animal that's always really positive thinking a bit like um um horton hears a who you've got this elephant who's so positive thinking and all these difficult events happen but he only ever sees the positive and so in the end he succeeds and we know this story constantly in literature like we hear this again and again but the like an and like a, a being that has this positivity and in the end prevails. Um, so yeah, so um, so when I try to do things, I can't say that I always do it like this. Like sometimes fear or something takes over. But um, when I try to do things, I try to do it out of that place of expansiveness. And it's um, like so when I'm writing my book that I'm currently writing, I just love it. And I just, I just know of its success. I can feel it. And it's really expansive and beautiful. And this is the way in which, ideally, a balanced human wants to predominantly be acting from. You have this chakra system. And when you're not acting out of separation and like trying to avoid your experience because of fear and anxiety and you become more balanced, then you you want to pay attention to when your chakra is closed to things and when they say no to things, but not in an identified way, in a free way. And then you want to move towards the things that that make you expansive. So for example, so say if I was in the supermarket and I was buying food like you want to move away from buying the foods where your body in a balanced way says no and an expanded way says yes and this this is the way life works in everything in writing in relationships so it's so beautiful like what is it you want from a relationship so often we try to fix relationships out of difficulty so we go to a counselor and we say you know this is what's difficult this is what's difficult which can be beneficial because then you can understand what you want and what you don't want. That can be the first level. But then eventually, what actually really needs to change is what your core desires are. Like, not what your core desires are. It's like, what needs to change is a movement to what your core desires are. And your, your deep down desire is to be in harmony with your partner, is to love your partner, is to watch your partner flour flourish is to watch you two flourish. It's just that when you're on more surface ones, you're on identification, you might be in hate and revenge and blame and shame. But underneath that, of course, what you want is for them to, to flourish, for them to succeed, for you to succeed. And it's moving down like to these your original impulses of expansion and moving away from 
So your, your way you orientate yourself is you move to that which is expansive. And that's so obvious because we're set up with these pleasure pain beings. So you move towards pleasure and you move away from pain. That's the natural impulses of our body. But because we identify, it becomes also complicated and we get into blame, all these stories, this negativity. And of course you want everyone around you to thrive. Of course you want your book to thrive. And then you move away from the no's. So when somebody's coming with negative energy, you don't want to be in that. So there's this no energy that comes to it. And actually I believe that deep down, um, like everybody has this positivity in them, this childlike wonder that we're born with it. We just get talked out of it and we get so identified and into seeking and trying to maintain pleasure. That's the other key to it, to law of attraction, is that you can't be identified with the outcome. So it's not about the outcome, really. I know it sounds like it's about the outcome, but it's, it's not. It's, it's in the moment. It's you say what you want, like the success. So I don't even want success for the book. I just feel it's successful. It just is successful. And then... Um, and it's a bit, even if you say you want success, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, I forgot what I was bleeping on about then. What was she bleeping on about? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I forgot what I was saying, so I have to move on now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But what about the doubt? I can artificially make myself feel hopeful about the future outcome if I'm ridden with doubt and fear. Yeah, so that's like more on the surface. So this is where you have to work with yourself. So you've got like deep down, you have these positive feelings. And then you have these doubts. And this is when your chakra system is out of balance because of separation and seeking. Oh yeah, I was talking about outcome before. So it's not about the outcome. It's like you give it to God. So it's actually about this moment. It's actually about vibrating in this moment in in beauty. So it's like, like so with the book when I'm writing, it's not that I'm thinking I want it to be successful. It just is successful. And there's a vibration with that. And it just I'm just envisioning it going out to people and just is successful. It just is magical. But it's not really about the outcome. It's about this moment. It's about you being true to your feelings in this moment. And then you give it to God, you give it to life, like the outcome then is in life hand, and the perfect outcome will arise as long as your intention is correct. And that actually might be that only one person reads my book. And if that is the case, that is exactly what is meant to happen. And that's its beauty. So it's not about attachments to the future. So the reason that you're riddled with doubt and insecurities is identification, seeking and seeking patterns that have emerged that you might have picked up from your parents or might have formed in this life or is just from humanity. And this sends your chakra system out of, out of sync and then you begin to get into worry and anxiety and then that's more of a surface level that you have to heal first. So then it's um, healing that. Underneath you have that positivity there and it's just coming down to it. And maybe throughout the day, the anxiety might leave, leave and you'll feel that expansiveness. So first of all, then, in that case, is you have to be realistic. So say if you're thinking about, I don't know, your future creative po project, I know that you're a writer, so you're, you're thinking about your work, and anxiety comes and you think you're going to fail and not do well. You first of all just have to admit that to yourself, because often we don't admit that to ourselves. Often we're blaming someone else for our failure, we're blaming our environment, we're blaming this or we're blaming that or we're blaming life circumstances. So first of all, you've got to admit, I feel really insecure and I feel like I'm going to fail and I'm afraid I'm going to fail. And that, that can even happen to me sometimes. It doesn't happen so much with the book, but you know, sometimes with my dyslexia and paperwork, I can sometimes get knocked over by the bandwagon and feel like I'm going to fuck up my paperwork and get in trouble. And then Luckily, I can shift it quite quickly. When I see that thought coming, I can feel it and then I can say to myself, what is it you want? And it's success with my paperwork. Like, I want to be successful with my paperwork and complete it and enjoy it. 
So first of all, you have to acknowledge it and you have to be honest and you have to get to the core of the thought. So you've got all these surface thoughts, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's because I fucked up this, it's because this is happening, it's because that's happening. And then you have to get to the core of it and it's, I feel like I'm going to fail. I'm, I'm going to fail, I'm not going to do well, no one's going to love me, I'm going to be abandoned. And you get to that thought um, and you can do some like trauma release or healing by where did you learn that thought, where is it coming from? Like, do you remember it from childhood? And then maybe you remember like being really unpopular at school or people bullying you or telling you you couldn't do it. So you associate it with a couple of things maybe. Just really get to know it and really become friends with it and see how it's affecting you in your life, like when you're interacting with someone, how it's there. So just giving it attention and giving it time. And then at some point you'll feel like, you'll know when it's ready, you transform it to the opposite. And you ask that feeling, what is it that I want? And then you, that, that feeling says, I want to be loved and I want to be successful. And then when you're ready, that will pick up that vibration and put it into the positive. And as you say that, I want to be liked and I want to be successful and I want to thrive, your, your chakra will go into the positive and vibrate in the positive. So that is the process. <laughs> I hope I say it clear enough. Sometimes I sound complex. Thank you for your question.